Okay, so lecture today is review of first and second order ordinary differential equation. Yeah, you have learned last time about system modeling, and uh, you uh, already saw that the dynamical system are governed by differential equation. So today you will be learning uh, the characteristic of the first and second order differential equation. So you can see the detailed behavior of uh, the response of a system uh, in the transient part and also the steady state part. So I will do very quick, I will go very fast but uh, as detailed as possible about first and second order differential equation. Um, let me review the system that uh, yeah that has that that is governed by the first order differential equation. For example, the RC circuit. Um, I like the blue one. Let me change to the blue one. So here is input voltage U and the output voltage at the capacitor here. Let's call it uh, V out. And this is uh, resistor and this is capacitor. So at time equals zero, uh, the switch K is switched to, uh, let's say one. Okay. So K, yeah, T greater than or equal to zero, K equal to one, which means as one is here. Yeah, one is here, zero is here. So we want to observe the output voltage V out here in function of time. Yeah, we have learned that. Yeah, I used to explain that the response of the V out behaves like this, and during this part is called transient, and during this part, when t go to infinity, we go steady state. Okay. So transient transient should be uh, transient. Oh, so transient should be yeah, this part and steady state is this part. Okay. Yeah. So today we are going to. Uh, so the e equation that uh, have this response. So first, let's uh, see the equation that govern the dynamic behavior for the system. So the equation looks like this: V out dot plus yeah uh, one over R C V out equal to U. Oh. 1 over RC U times U. Okay. Um, to, to reduce uh, the, the complexity of notation, let, let me just write down uh, H dot plus A H equal to A U like this. So now we are going to solve this equation. 
Um, because this equation is linear, we can imagine what if uh, the, the solution is combination of one part of the solution that that uh, just can cancel out I mean uh, that does not need to equal to the right hand side but another part of solution is responsible to uh, equal to the right hand side you know what I mean I mean let, let's say h uh, equal to h equal to one part which just can sell out among themselves I mean among the derivative and uh, yeah the, the left hand side itself just can send out by themselves and another part that is responsible to uh, equate the right hand side you, you got a point because linear system um, linear system when you substitute it to the equation you got uh, this part and you get this part plus a h p and equal to u. So I just said that uh, this part it just can set out among uh, the left hand side themselves. Okay, and this part is responsible to equate the right hand sides. Yeah, this is a very uh, great idea. And the, so, if this one can sell out by themselves, it means uh, this sum equal to zero, and this one will remain equal to this. Okay, and then we call that H A. H A is called homogeneous solution. And HP is called particular solution. So particular solution means you can pick any very particular, very specific that uh, can uh, be responsible to equate the right hand side. Yeah, that's what it means. And homogeneous means uh, in a family of solution, yeah, you can have a, a very big family of solution as long as this term they can set out themselves. Yeah, that is the main idea. <clears throat> so first, solve for the the first step. Okay, now we have uh, the first step. First step is to solve for homogeneous solution okay. which means h dot h plus a h h equal to zero okay. now you got the, the first main idea now come to the second main idea um, so what, what kind of function can be the, the right candidate that the derivative uh, can still have the same form of the original function? What kind of function? What kind of function that the derivative still have the same form of the original one? What, what did you say? Yes. So on exponential when you take time derivative, as long as the exponent is linear, then you still have the same form. So only the same form that can you can uh, cancel out each other, right? If let's say if you have polynomial in terms of time for this one degree n, time derivative of this one must be degree n minus one. 
it's not possible that this term can be cancelled out, right? So that's why this is the, the big idea is that uh, we can we can assume we can immediate, immediately assume that H H is exponential form, okay, and it's linear. The exponent is linear in terms of time. So that the, the time derivative would be still exponential, and um, it just have uh, some coefficient. Okay? Uh, and actually, it, it can be uh, it can have a constant in front of it. It can have constant, right? Um, then, yeah. Now you need to find. Okay, we already assume that the H A equal to C E to the lambda T. Now the third step, you need to find lambda. Okay. Need to find lambda. So how to find lambda? You substitute this one back to the equation. Okay. But uh, actually you need to find time derivative first. H A dot equal to c lambda e to the lambda t okay now substitute this to the original equation the h a h h dot uh, yeah h a dot plus a h equal to zero with h h which means um yes which means c lambda e to the lambda t plus a c e to the lambda t then you can write down like this lambda plus a c e to the lambda t equal to zero okay. so now this equation can be zero if and only if this part is zero, right? And this is how you can find lambda. So this means lambda plus a equal to zero, or lambda equal to minus a. And actually, this one is called. You remember what you call this? Sabun. What do you call this equation? Yeah, characteristics, characteristics equation. Okay. So, what? Uh, when you are very familiar with uh, the way to find the solution, you don't need to go along this process. You just go immediately to the characteristic equation and find the solution of the characteristic equation, and then you get back to the solution, uh, which is h equal to yeah, h a equal to c e to the minus a t. Okay. Yeah, to this equation. But uh, I, today I just explained uh, how characteristic equation appear okay. actually it's from this uh, the, the idea I just explained earlier okay next step so second step is to find particular solution From this equation, uh, h dot p plus a h p equal to u. 
So particular solution depends on the right hand side. If the right hand side has the form of exponential, then the left hand side also has the exponential form. And if the right hand side is uh, constant, or maybe more general, is polynomial. If the right hand side is polynomial, the left hand side should be also polynomial. And if the right hand side is the right hand side u here is trigonometric, the left hand side must be trigonometric as well. Okay, so it depends. Uh, in our case, uh, in our uh, our example here, or uh, example here, u is just constant, okay, or uh, constant, or you can say step because we only consider at the time zero, you just go to some constant value. Okay. So suppose suppose you is step. Yeah, step means like this. U of T T at time zero at T equal to zero, it just jump like this. To one. So, I think I forgot something. I forgot a here. So, what what kind of function on the left hand side that uh, yeah because because constant uh, is considered polynomial degree zero. So, what kind of function h? that when the derivative has even degree lower than here and you can uh, guarantee that the sum here still equal to a constant here. So what kind of, of function is here? If it is uh, degree one, for example, the derivative is degree zero. This one is fine, but this one cannot cancel with this one degree 1 here and here the degree 0 is not possible so it means wow so it should be should have the same degree as the right hand side so if u is constant then it should be constant as well see so if it is constant the derivative is 0 then sure you, you still can have a way to equate this part and this part right so actually, HP is just equal to U, um, because U is 1 now. HP is just equal to 1, because a dot P equal to 0. So 0 plus A equal to A. That's true, right? Yeah, so particular solution is you just follow your intuition to, to find what can uh, equate left hand side and right hand side. It's, uh, it, there, there's, there can be a systematic way to solve, but uh, before that, you need to follow intuition. For example, if this is polynomial up to degree 2, if the right hand side up to degree 2, of course, here must be uh, H must be polynomial up to degree 2 because the derivative must drop some degree and uh, you still can have find a way to equate both sides. Right, so now the solution, the solution, the, the complete solution H of T equal to homogeneous plus particular solution okay. um, so this homogeneous solution uh, has a constant that that to show that you can have a farm real solution for the homogeneous equation but uh, if you know this, your system start from some uh, initial condition then that initial condition will determine the value of c okay? 
for example, in this case, uh, in this case, I make it a little bit better. Yeah, so in this case, before we, we switch, uh, before we switch uh, K, okay, before we switch K to 1, the circuit is open and start from zero voltage, zero charge of faster, which means voltage output at time zero equal to zero. No voltage at all at the beginning. It means, uh, yeah, because H here is just V out. So we use the initial condition. Okay. Yeah, I can say step three. Step three, uh, step two, or step two, uh, is to determine determine C from initial condition. Um, so we have h of 0 equal to uh, c e to the 0 plus 1 equal to 0, which means c equal to minus 1. Then we have the final uh, solution is h of t equal to 1 minus e to the minus a t. Okay, so this is the solution. Yeah. And now we want to observe the characteristic of this equation, the behavior. Okay. The behavior of this equation, uh, solution H. H of t equal to 1 minus e to the minus a t. Um, in our case, a, a equal to 1 over r c, of course, it is positive. Yeah, it's not interesting to study the system with a negative a because uh, it's going to diverge. Okay. Okay, now let me draw the curve for this function. Okay, h of t here. Um, yeah, initial condition at time zero, it starts from zero here. Okay, and when t go to infinity, t go larger and a is positive, then minus a t is negative. It go to negative infinity. So exponent e to the minus infinity. It go to zero. Approach to zero. So when t go to infinity, this term go to zero. So it means t is go larger and larger. H just approach to one. Okay, so let me draw the asymptote one first. Then when t go to infinity, h just approach to one. Okay. Yeah. So this is the curve of the solution. Um. <coughs> Now, let, if I want to observe, yeah, I draw again, make it bigger. One is here.
I want to observe some uh, more behavior. Uh, for example, like the, what do you? I, I want to know the the tangent line here. Okay, the tangent line here. Uh, the tangent line here is at what time? Let's call it uh, tau. Okay, let's call it tau. Tau equal to one. Okay. So and the value here, yeah. What is the value here? H of tau equal to one. Okay. Uh, so to find the tangent line here, first you need to uh, take the derivative h dot of t equal to yeah you got uh, e to the minus a t okay from here then you substitute uh, t equal to zero okay so h dot at time zero equal to one so this slope actually is uh, one yeah this one does not look like one but anyway just assume that the scale t and scale h is not the same um, then uh, h of t h of oh let, let, let me find uh, tau here yeah, tau here. Um, when this one equal to one, so when h us, so what should I say? Yeah, uh, let let define this uh, equation first. The line here should be h of t equal to the slope, the slope one times t plus here because it goes to zero, then h just equal to t. Okay. Ah, okay. A should be here, right? No, minus here, minus, minus, become plus. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I feel that something wrong here. Okay, so... Um, we have... Um, oh, so you mean, so you mean uh, this, right? Uh, this one should be... A. Yep. Okay. Then the equation here should be A. Yep. So this line is a t when it equal to one. Uh, when we set it to one, I should write down like this. We have h. We have h dot of tau equal to 1, which means a times tau equal to 1. Or tau is actually just inverse of a. Okay, So tau here is 1 over a. And we want to know that uh, the value h of tau, yeah, then h of tau equal to uh, 1 minus e to the minus uh, a times 1 over a which means 1 minus e to the minus 1 okay. or you can write down like this uh, one over e, e minus one over e, okay, and this approximately 
Seci Sri Besan Ya Seci Sri Besan Yeah, so this is the characteristic of first order, uh, the solution of first order differential equation. Okay, here is sixty three percent, and here tau is yeah tau is a uh, one over a here. Is there any question? Okay, now let's observe what if the uh, uh, how the curve look like if A increase. If A increase, what does the curve look like? So observe from here. Okay, one minus e to the minus a t. Yeah, a is e positive here, positive. So if A increase, it means uh, this time increase faster, right? It's faster then e to the minus st also die faster die out faster die out faster means it's go to one faster okay so a if a increase uh, it look more like this okay yeah if a is even bigger and then it's like this. So this is the direction of A in this. Okay. Can you see that? So A, if we look at the circuit, A in this means small resistance. You have small resistance. If you have small resistance, means the current goes to the capacitor very fast. It is go fast, then capacitor get full at a faster rate as well. See. Also, if the capacitor is small, I mean the storage tank is small, then it can easily get full as well, right? Yeah. So this can explain the phenomenon in the circuit, what happened in there. It just consider if uh, the first differential equation is not derived from uh, electrical circuit, just say from other system. Uh, what if A is negative? If A is negative, then minus A is positive. So what happens when T go to infinity? Then you have E to the infinity. Right? If E to the infinity means uh, this one go to minus infinity, right? This term go to minus infinity, so uh, it become exponential like this. So it's kind of a uh, diverge, not convert to a, a constant value, right? So, what kind of system that uh, can go diverge? Can you imagine what kind of system can go diverge? Maybe explosion. You have very 
big uh, amount of fuel or some sort and you you just in, uh, ignite just a little bit and then it just go out of hand right? something like that you just can't imagine it but uh, actually the, the modeling maybe is not first order it can be different but you, you can just get the idea of when the system become unstable or become divert you just look at the exponent of the exponential term if the coefficient of the t is positive or not I mean the, the whole coefficient here if you uh, we include the, the minus sign if the whole the coefficient of the exponent is positive then you get the diverged solution and diverge uh, unstable system you you will learn a lot about stable and unstable system in the coming weeks Yeah, so um, I would like to end this uh, full session at here, so you can have a uh, 15 minutes break before we start to the next part.